Hey, what's going on out there, y'all? Back with another one. Um, here we are, season two, episode 12. And this one, I got the man, the myth, the legend, Vaughn Wesley. Say what up to the people, man. What up, what up, what up? The myth, the legend. You crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, man, you know, um, I know you don't really, you know, do social media like that. You know, you're more, you're more under the radar, so. Yeah, um, you know, we ain't got no handles to put up, but I feel like this is the opportunity for, for the people to hear from a really smart dude. Um, like I said, bro, ever since I met you, man, day one, bro, I just noticed, you, you know, you had a different level of intellect. So um, I just want right, you know, right. the opportunity to just kind of share some of that wisdom. You know what I mean? So um, first, I want to start off with, you know, I want, to, I want to take a little dive into this like this culture, bro. Um, I know you got a really, really strong opinion on just um, just. You just got a really good idea of just the direction that things should head. And I just really like your input. So, um, man, I just wanted to start off by asking you, bro, like, um, just what's your overall thought on just like society as a whole right now, as far as the American dream? Like most people, you know, they taught to go to school, get a job, live that traditional lifestyle. As a parent, what's your thoughts on like how a person should just kind of like go about carrying themselves in 2020 today's society mm, that's a broad that's a broad question man you know it depends on where where somebody is in life you know it depends on where they stand what their situation is everybody can't have the same blueprint on how to get there but for sure uh, i think the answer to the question more so just kind of defines you as an individual. Mm. Well, in that and case. Not, not, not necessarily defines you. It gives it gives the people an idea of who you are and where your perspective is. Mm. Society as a parent. Mm-hmm. In 2020. Yeah, your kids, like. Mm. Well, it depends. See, now that, you got to build off of the positivity where you where you want to go with your plan, you know, you got to get organized. That's what I do. I just, you know, I try to work towards getting more organized, looking past the bullshit because half of the time, but our system, this, the way it's set up, it ain't it ain't set up for you to win. You got to do your own homework. You got to learn what you about, and you got to prepare your child, your whatever your seed, you know, for this world. Right. It's going to change them regardless. So the lessons you learn from bumping your head and just going through um, the struggle, everybody knows, you know, the economical struggles of black people, the oppression, the, you know, the laws that still getting us locked up for generations and, mm-hmm. you know, really tipping the scale on the economical type of basis. You know, it's different. Shit just different. We slanted, so you got to go in with that type of mindset to put a plan together and execute. Right. And put some values about it behind it, whatever your purpose is. Mine is to make sure that I got a, you know, generational wealth. Right. I'm on. And then it's about shit, making sure you good and making sure everybody's fed around you. Spreading that love. Now, let me ask you, because you mentioned something interesting. You said it's kind of like it's set up. It ain't it ain't really set up for you to win. So let me ask you, like, what are some of those like um, like like common roadblocks that you think are just kind of in the way? Like the stuff that's holding you back for most people. Mm. Rules. I mean, it's just the way it's set up. You know, if you get you make a mistake early on. You know, and that mark stay with you. You got to wear that on your jacket forever. I'm saying from a, a legal standpoint, mm-hmm. you know, it's certain things. It shit, it just stand. It keeps you back. It holds you accountable for something that a decision that you may have made when you were a whole different person. It don't right. allow you to grow. The system don't allow you to grow, and it don't give right. you a, a, a even playing field to even get shit right. So you always feel like you fighting against something that wasn't designed for you to win in the first place. Right. Now, what you already know how this shit was transitioned. So even going from from that, from a legal standpoint on just to trying to get a job, you ain't even into into that type, that type of life. You know what I'm saying? You just trying to get a job. 
Right. So, like, I think, so, I, I think I probably should like have you, that question. You said like, what? I, I probably should have prefaced that question with, like, what? What is your definition of winning? Oh, definition of winning is shit. Being able to provide. Being a, the basic need to protect and provide. To, right. be, to be able to do that, be comfortable with it, you know? To be able to give back. To be able to have a system that runs. That's what winning is. Whatever you, is whatever it is with either with it go back to your goals. If it's whether it's money, whether it's uh, family, regardless, whatever you right. gotta work on, that that's your form of winning. My right. form obviously the answer is for every man, you know, every individual yeah. is gonna say a different response to that. So yeah. for me, I, I say winning is is the man who's happy. Uh, at the end of the day, the man who can wake up in a good fucking mood and be happy is the man who's winning. And so, um, <clears throat> when when you when you when you take that approach towards life, things actually get a lot easier. Like, um, you realize that that you know, it's winning is not far away from you if if it's just the the the, the equation of happiness. So, um, you could make thirty thousand dollars a year and be winning. You can make. 20,000 to be winning, you can make 50,000 a million to be winning. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's the thing about social media is it created a lot of insecurities for a lot of people because it gives you an at scale uh, point of view of other people's definition of winning. Like they post fancy watches and cars and houses and vacations and you think this shit is just like everyday life. That's not everyday life. That's a that's a fake reality that somebody else painted. You know, so it it, it, it kind of like distorts the the true narrative of what the fuck is actually going on here what the fuck is actually going on here on earth is the happiest exactly. people are the people who are winning mm -hmm. so with that being said what's holding people back what what's what's actually not set up for them to win they know? holding they self back because it's designed for them too like that's what it is it's a trick to where it's like I could plant a seed in your head, and as long as that shit grow, I, I could just look at you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's right. indirect. You know, you right. just the effect. you infected already. You already right. got right. something in you that's holding you back, and it's you. But you don't yeah. realize it until you keep going through shit and realizing, like, damn, shit don't change. You know, that one, that one hit deep. Change yourself. That's it. That that's one hit deep, got bro. Control over. The reason why that one hit so deep is because, like, I remember, like, certain conversations as a kid that I had with certain adults. They'll yeah. leave me with one little nugget, one little seed that I carry yeah. everywhere with me for the rest of my shit. And I'm like, fuck, how many conversations have I had with little kids where that one nugget or that one gem was just dropped? Yeah, drop yeah. You know, <laughs> like you said, that seed, you don't have to do shit else but let that thing grow. Mm -hmm. That's powerful, man. So, yeah, like... um. You know, I feel like if you if you feel like you have a decent model of the world and you want to share that model with other people, um, like me, me, I feel like I'm a happier person in general than the next man. Like I don't even say that to toot my own horn. I'm, it's actually embarrassing to say that, but I'm generally. Why you feel like that? Why you feel um, like embarrassing to say that? Um, because I just feel like since happiness is just so so like so simple to find now that I know you know now that I've redefined what it means. Um, I feel like it's available for everybody. They just simply haven't flipped that switch and realized it. And I remember when I was in that dark state, that dark period. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, to be honest with you, the universe, um, it has a clever way of reminding me what that state feel like. Every now and then I wake up feeling weird. Like, what? Like, oh, yeah, let me remember uh, who I am again. You know what I'm saying? Take a few minutes some days. But for the most part, you know, you got to remind yourself, like Les Brown said, every single day you have to re-remind yourself what are you doing here? What right. is that purpose you assign for yourself? That's it. It refulfills you every single day. And by me knowing that, knowing that's the simple flip that that switch that has to be flipped, like that's available for every man. You don't need a million dollars for that. And so mm -hmm. that's embarrassing. The fact that that simple concept can't be taught to an adult. You know what I mean? So like, how can I? Well, it's, it's, it's easy to it's easy to fantasize. It's easy to daydream when you're doing some shit you don't like. When you're doing some shit for shit, eight hour, eight to twelve hours you don't like. It's easy to fantasize about having a whole lot of money to where you wouldn't have that. But you don't have a you don't your mind don't even have the the capacity of understanding 
that it's going to be more problems once you get that. Like once you it's like wanting a burger real bad. It's like, damn, right. you know, eight in two days, you want that burger bad as hell. Then you, right. you get the burger. Then you say you eat a burger for five days straight. Now you the burger really ain't doing it enough. Like you want some fries with that burger. Like eventually your hunger, your appetite gonna grow. It go with anything. Women, it go with money, it go with anything. <laughs> that's just life, bro. Like that's why I say you gotta figure your own self out and then figure put a blueprint together and execute on that shit. And understand that you is your worst enemy. You the one standing in the way. You just hit. You just hit it, bro. It's, a, it's every man is 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 trying to figure that out for himself, designing that blueprint about life. And for most for most men, they pass it to their children. Like, hey, here's the best approach to this game. Try this. Um, I don't believe in forcing it on your kids. Letting them, you know, experience will always be the best teacher. But just inviting them to try it. Like, here, try this, and letting them mostly learn from your actions, not your words. So. Um, you know, like you said, <clears throat> you just hit it, you know, you hit it on the nose. Like, you know, over time, that, that stuff just kind of gets beat, beat in. Like, that seed grows and, and your hunger for that grows. That's just right. that's the nature of the beast. That's why you need to understand your purpose, because your purpose is going to guide you through that shit. It's like everybody got, because everybody got that ego side of them, you know, that the, once you get that shit, it's going to feel good, but then you're going to get used to it. And then what? And now, you're, and now you can't go back. You can't afford to go back. Your ego won't allow that. So yeah, now you're going to compromise late. You're gonna compromise your character to keep up with the facade. That's what it ended up being. And then you really, you really fucked up now because you right. ain't getting through to yourself. Hey, fucking exactly. And let me tell you, bro, that's what happens with, like, lottery winners and shit. They hit this lottery. They get a couple million. And they life, they, it seemingly goes up. But guess what? When your life go up, but your finances is depleting and, will, and it will eventually go down here, you don't even see it coming. It's like a rug is pulled from under you. Or it's yeah. like the matrix when your core being pulled out and you waking up like, what the hell just happened when yeah. it's all gone? Because you realize like, damn, I was not doing the right shit with my money. Like, you know how many rich people go broke? Yeah. I, I be trying to tell people that I work with, like coworkers, and I want your opinion on this. People tell me they need millions of dollars to quit their job. For you as an individual, and I feel like personally this question defines where a man is in his life. For you as an individual, how much money would it take for you to like leave your nine to five and just go after it? What's the what's that number for you? It ain't about the number, it's about the it. The it. The number is not the problem. It's the it. If you don't know what you about to transition to, the, all the money in the world ain't going to mean shit. you absolutely fucking literally right. <laughs> it's about having a plan, right? Yes. So, like, you can give a clown, you know, a couple million. It's not going to matter. You know what I mean? You can give you don't me. Got a plan. If you don't got a plan, you just got a million dollars with no yeah. job. <laughs> that, que- that question, you know, it was so interesting because I let everybody, you know, say what they said first. You know, one guy said a million, another guy say five hundred thousand, another guy say a hundred thousand. They got Did you ask them why? Huh? Did they tell you why? You know, they they probably why, did. Why that number? Why that number? They they probably went over some, you know, some some things they would do with it, but they never quite said why, right? That's why. Yeah, how you come up with a million? I, so if you I, got eight hundred thousand, that just ain't like good. Said, like you, uh, the reason. Million. Let me tell you where that million came from. The million came from, like you mentioned, it's the it. They didn't have a it. So let me say a million. So it just makes sense. Does it sound good? <laughs> it sound good. I they said, know yeah. when you get a million, and after you pay Sam, that's really like seven hundred thousand, maybe. Listen, I told them, give me thirty thousand. And they was like, what? Is you crazy? I was like, nah. I just know what to do. I already know, bro. I, uh, one one thousand of that, one thousand of those dollars will launch my podcast on a scale like never before. Mm. Just one thousand okay. of those dollars. <laughs> right. It's like Gary said, it's it's like buying real estate. If you Thomas Edison, you buying up real estate in in, in shit in in the eighteen hundreds, you buying up all that California real estate 
and then that New York real estate when it's cheap in Manhattan. You know what I'm saying? You're not being that 2019 entrepreneur that's overpaying for that shit. You know, you grabbing that real estate now. So like, why right. this shit is cheap? I will put as much money towards that real estate and take up that and get that awareness and build that awareness for myself. I know like what I'm creating already, and it don't take me a lot to do that. So like, like I said, I think the que- the answer to that question for each man kind of just tells where he is in his life. And if he don't have that it, like you said, they're gonna come up with these absurd numbers. Exactly. So what's yeah. that? What's that number for you? Have you or or that number for me is uh to you saying to just leave my job up and up and go after your uh you know your main goal your main plan type shit like mm. the one that's gonna make sure your kids eat type shit I wouldn't necessarily need to leave. Mm. <laughs> interesting that's another if thing because them, like i wouldn't necessarily need to leave and I, exactly. i'm saying that only in my because you asked me so in my personal lane what i do in my job is not see my job is i don't go into my i don't go to work like this is a job like this is my job i go in i kick back man i'm like my job is pretty much what i'm gonna do and what i'm gonna transition so my job is not i'm not serving my job my job is serving me like it's sir, it's working for me. Like they not, I don't work. For them. Like <laughs> you won, brother. And let me tell you, because it's not, it's not a lot of people in that predicament that love what they do. So I guess I'm mainly speaking for the people who don't really love, like what they what they give eight hours a day to. But kind of oh, like wait a minute now. Cool. See, love is a strong word. Love is a strong word. I said it's serving me. I don't love it. Okay. It's serving okay. me so I can get to what I love. But Word. still, while you while something is serving you, you need to take the nutrition so you can feed the yes. mission and keep it moving. Right, right, right. You know and, what I'm saying? And on, and on average, make your you shit as long as your it, now if your job is preventing you or you going into your job hating this shit and and you don't know how it's serving you, it's not paying you. You know what I'm saying? Then it's time to think and move on. You got to come up with a different plan. Shit, it happens all the time. For sure. And then you you mentioned nutrition, right? And so when I think of that, you know, obviously, you know, you're talking about just the stuff that the stuff that helps your life, period. Not just food, but shelter yeah. and clothing and things of that nature. So but mainly like for me, you know, like my overhead, um, you know, living with my moms and shit. Um, my main look, look, just put some food on my stomach to survive and pay my rent. You know what I'm saying? Keep it real simple. Um, but like, I don't need a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, like, I don't need much. So, um, if I'm trying to ultimately get to where I love, I know being able to just put more time to, you know, towards doing that is the ultimate goal. Most of us don't have the time to do that because we have to go to the job that we don't necessarily love. You know what I'm saying? To, like you said, get in that position. Yeah. So like, if you didn't have to do what you what you you know what you didn't necessarily like because that's already taken care of because of the money is there like what would you spend most of your time doing type shit right and like for you for for some people that's playing the game for some men that's actually playing the game to be honest with you the whole reason i wanted to start a business a few years ago was so i could play the game for the rest of my life i had so much fun doing it i'm like damn so I got to go out, get a job, save up money, invest in a business or some type of real estate, make this passive income so I can play the fucking game. Obviously, my ambition shifted as the journey began, but um, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like for every man, that's different. Yeah. Um, so like whatever, I, you know, whatever it is that you love is where we all should be striving to get to and and being able to advocate more time to that thing. Yeah. Definitely. You know, so yeah, that's that's what that's what that was kind of you know where I was coming from. But like I said, like you said, for me, fortunately, and it sounds like for you, you you saying if you just didn't have like everything was taken care of, what would you spend that time doing? And you said for that, that motivation was playing a game first. (laughs) Yeah, I wanted to play the fucking game. That's real shit. 
No, nah, that's real shit. It's, <laughs> it's funny how when you talked about how you when you started, your ambition changed. Mm-hmm. That's just powerful. Yep, it was originally to play the game. I mean, but Joe, when you're on the right path, that shit is going to change you. That's what happens, and a lot of people don't understand. You just got to start walking. You just got to start right. walking. Yeah. You know? Because the universe, it never steers you wrong. It's going to always guide you where you should have been in the first fucking place. Whether soccer wasn't for you, or basketball wasn't for you, or rapping wasn't for you, it's going to guide you where you were, where you should have been had you got started. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying. You ever... Um... You ever heard of the, or read the, the story of Who Moved My Cheese? That is one of the most profound stories on God's green earth. And if y'all watching this still, please check out Who Moved My Cheese. It is the easiest read of your entire life. It takes right. five, ten minutes. Definitely. But the impact will last for millenniums. I'm telling y'all. Who Moved yeah. My Cheese, bro? Man, what was the biggest thing that book taught you? The biggest thing that it taught me is that everybody has all, all what was it, four characters? They got all of them in, inside of them. Everybody has a him, a ha, a, a sniff, and a scurry, huh? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Facts, you know. Because it, life is so broad, you in in one area or another, you one of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You scurrying for some, facts. You sniffing for some, facts. You hemming about some, you hawing about some. Like you all of them. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> it is such an insider if you haven't seen this or read this book, but that shit powerful, bro. We oh, we have all four characters inside of us. I, I did not fucking realize that, but mm-hmm. um, that book did two things, man. It exposed like humanity for like just how how much we can complicate simple shit like 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 him him would never leave the fucking the maze he would never go out and venture into the maze because yeah. he was just just complaining about shit that just was in the past most people use the past as an excuse not to move forward but did you peep him he didn't get that shit off of his. He didn't start thinking for himself until he started disagreeing with his boy. He was listening to his boy, and that's why he was. What was he doing? Harm. Word. And so when that, he started thinking for himself, he like, wait a minute. I think I had to. We've been for two years and we ain't had no new cheese. <laughs> what the fuck? So we gotta move on. Exactly. Spoiler alert for anybody, you know. But it's a good story. It's a simple story. So very, very simple story, man. It's just like you know, just, just it's just about not being afraid to go, to pretty much venture out into the unknown. Right. Venturing out because like you don't know what's out there for you. But when I went to Texas with zero dollars in my pocket, a friend had bought me a bus ticket there. I I didn't have zero worries. I had my faith, and that and that's all you need out there in the maze. Because you will find little pieces of cheese out there that keep you alive. And that's what right. I came across. I came across people that wanted to help me and, you know, and, and, and support what I, what I had going for, this, for myself. And those people was the cheese. You know what I'm saying? They, they, right. And so, like, right. um, like I said, the fact that I do this podcast now and I'm able to just reach more people, um, the comments that I get here and there or the inbox that I get from a kid, from a 13 year old kid at 6 a.m. that I wake up to telling me I impacted their life. Those are little pieces of cheese for me to keep me in it. You get what I'm saying? Until this thing is is is, is, is where I can do it, do what I love full time. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what I love to do. I love to be able to impact. And the more time I can allocate to that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And just man, a life, a life, a life spent doing what you love, like bro, like what it. That's the game, for me. That's the game. <laughs> that's the cheese. <laughs> that's the cheese. That's what's up. That's yes, what sir. we all gotta aspire to, to get to. But you know, sometimes you know people. Shit, everybody really, you know, it come down to looking at something and 
thinking that you ain't got the answer, so it ain't worth going through. It ain't worth trying to take that next step. Mm. Shit. As you grow, you grow. You learn. You know what corners to go to. You know where the cheese station's at. You know, you, you know, know the cheese stations. Yeah. You know. But one of the other powerful things in that story was the fact that him went back. Mm. He went back once he found the cheese. Right. He took it right back to heart. Ain't he that what we do? Kept it moving. He could have kept it moving and found more cheese in a, at a quicker rate. Especially the way he was talking about shit, the, the yeah. time spent trying to find it. Exactly. And you know, something interesting happened when he made his way all the way back. He realized his friend had the same fucking mindset, the same victim mentality. It hadn't changed. Hadn't changed. Because he hadn't been out there. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, it's a pro. It's a you know, this man. It's, uh, that's that that gay man. That just man. That that man. People don't understand this. It's a message, man. It's a message. Yeah. In certain information, certain gems, like you know, even if you just if you didn't read the book but you listened and you still got the same thing from this talk, that's still powerful. You know, those are just lifelong nuggets, and that generational nuggets. Yeah. Shit that lasts forever, type shit. You know what I mean? Right. So. You know, I know we don't have all the time in the world, but uh, like I said, time spent doing what you love, it don't matter how you get up out of here. You know that's guaranteed. So, like, um, if I could be happy and then and do for others, I'm in a, I'm in a great place because at the end of the day, see, life, life is, you know, it comes down to that funeral. That's the last statement of who you was or what you represented. Not the last statement. It's just the reflection. It's so just it's, that's one of the yeah. It's, that's it's, it. That moment is something within itself where people choose to like celebrate or you know or mourn your passing. They ain't mourning your past. Half of the people at your that come to your funeral is getting to know you. They learning about you through your obituary. Like Man, that's that, what it's for. That, that's what people who know you. They don't need no life. obituary. It look nice, but everything they feel that shit. Everybody who they got their face in the obituary the whole time because they choosing just a lot of people they they put time off. You would think about somebody, but you don't pick up the phone and call. You know what I'm saying? You too Thanks. busy. You you caught in your own routine. Thanks. You don't go back. You ain't take the cheese back. Whatever whatever value you got, you ain't go back. You left and then you, when it was too late, you find you took the time to try to find out who this person was. That's the that's fucked up. I think it all really depends on you. Because I know we live in a selfish world and that's not that's not purposely done. That's just how DNA works. It's for self for the most part. And so if if your approach isn't about the other person first, why should they give a fuck about you? But when you live a lifestyle that was full of giving to others, Something profound happens when that day comes, bro. Like, people, like, holidays get made. Shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Streets get named. You get what I'm saying? Oh, no, no, no. See, I ain't talking about people who are in. That is, that's that's a statement. Yeah, that's powerful. That's something I think we all aspire to get to. But I'm talking about the people who in your circle, but not in your circle. Facts, you know facts. I got, we all got those people. We all got those people, like you said, in yeah. it, but not in it. Don't really know who you are. And to be honest with you, bro. And it's different from the ones you know it's love with. You know, y'all no, just. Nobody knows who you I'm are. Saying, but like, Nobody really knows you. Like, nobody knows. Closest person to you don't know you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you right. don't know me here, bro. Like, I know a reflection of you, bro. Like, and from the person yeah. I met, the Von Wesley I met, the reflection of Von Wesley that I know and have experienced. That's, you know, that's the person I fuck with. But I don't know you, bro. And I'll never know you. I will never know you. You know what I'm saying? I just only know the reflection that you give us. That's a powerful point. So, like, that's why I don't judge myself, you know? Like, that's why I'm I'm able to, like, you know, as as much as I probably, when I I make content, like, when I look at this video and I go back and do it, I'm probably going to say, oh, man, I I had a bump on my face right here. I don't want to post I always hate everything I put out. 
but me understanding that that's not for me and nobody really gives a fuck about what the fuck I got going on anyway. <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah. So just hit seeing, like, oh, put it out. Next thing you know, somebody comment like, hey, thank you. Shit, you're welcome. <laughs> but nobody knows you, bro. They can think they know you all they want. You're Your right. girlfriend don't know you. Your kids don't know you. They don't know you. <laughs> Not the real you. <laughs> At the time, you don't know you. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Let alone. Right. Like, so that's why self awareness is, you know, another thing that, you know, Gary obviously preach a lot. And getting to know you a lot more. Getting yeah. to know the things. Getting to know the things that just kind of like genuinely satisfy you about life type shit. And yeah. I know for a lot of things, man, it really don't. It don't cost money. You know. Right. But um, I like you, man. I like man, you. yeah, yeah. He he. What he's doing is what I aspire to do. Because yeah. he's proven to me it can be done. You know, he prove he proves to me every day it can be done with the with the. I can you know, see you doing that too, man. I'm already doing it. That's what you did doing. already too. Congratulations on the uh, what the five hundred? Five hundred club, man. That's what's up. You're doing. Yeah. Yeah, man. Just, 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 yeah. and just loving your process, you will, you will eventually win. And so yeah, that's I think all. Like, that's all it is, anyway. Like, because, like I said earlier, once you get this shit, you know, once you get the goal, whether it's money or whatever, is it gets stale after a while. You gotta love the process when you're doing. I literally process, just mentioned that the other day. Somebody uh, tried to cuss me out, tell me I was wrong. I'm used to that by now, but I said that you know Malcolm Gladwell's quote. You know, uh, life has two tragedies. Not getting what your heart's desire is, number one. And then number two, actually getting it. And mm. that's it. Like, once you set out for everything that you set out for, what else What else is there? That's why Gary said the day he bought a New York Jets was his, his ultimate life goal. It's going to be the worst day of his fucking life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I don't know, man. I don't you think know, I had them problems. Know. You know, you know how Gary is, man. You know he don't mean shit how he say shit, but he yeah, got to be radical. Yeah, he yeah. got to be radical to like, prove. No, nah, that's point. extreme right there. He said it's gonna be the worst day of my fucking life. Obviously, <laughs> he was like, look, he was like, the reason why I respond to y'all text messages and y'all DMs and and I'm building up all this social equity with y'all and why y'all love me so much and think I fucking walk on water is because I'm trying to win a fucking Super Bowl. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. That's the reason I give y'all this content and shit and stay on top of my shit every day. It's because I'm trying to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, respect. <laughs> too. He, know, he knows what the fuck he's up to on earth type shit. <laughs> yeah, he definitely uh, he, he operate at a different frequency, you know what I'm saying? He Absolutely. It's, deep, it's deeper than rap with him, man. Deeper, for sure. For sure. And, you know, I think, um, you know, all of us have a unique frequency that we learn that. And obviously we learn from individuals who share that same frequency, which is why me and you can sit up and have an hour long fucking conversation because our frequency is, is just about there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, obviously, those are the people you learn from a lot more and you like to just listen to a lot more. So. um, But, yeah, I kind of like just share. I, I've started to adapt that radical point of view to kind of like drive home points better and deeper for the level of impact that I'm trying to have, you know? So like I often mentioned, you know, this crazy shit that can happen to me every day, like my legs getting cut off and people would be like, Hey, don't say that, bro. Why would you say that? Like, cause I don't care. Like, like I love the fact that I have legs every day that I can wake up and say, thank you every day and be grateful that I have these legs. And not have to wait till something tragic happens to appreciate what I have. I don't need tragedy. I'm grateful right the fuck now. I don't care what happens tomorrow. I'm right here. Here I am. For real. Alive and well. Hello. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No matter what I've been through or experienced. Like, that's why I can say that in that moment. Because I'm there in that moment. Here I am. <laughs> and so, um. Present. For sure. And, and. Man, that's another thing, too, like not living too far ahead or too far behind. Like, um, obviously, your, your life situation is just that is just the situation. 
but it can immer- you can get immersed in it, and it feels like an eternity, damn near. Like, I've been here forever going through this shit type shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, like, cause I know it's a lot of people out there that still like, um, they just haven't found that level where they can just wake up grateful. Like, like when they walk down the street, they don't see those roses or those beautiful trees because they so already in what they in, and, you know. Yeah. I mean, the world distracted. Our attention span is is worse than it was before. Shit, we got social media. Everybody in their phone, you know, they in their own problems in their own world. Mad at the same person from 20 years ago and shit, you know. Mm. Human nature too, you know. Mm-hmm. Facts. You get distracted from really what's in front of you. Facts. You, just, you so busy yelling at your baby, you ain't even appreciate the fact that damn, some people can't even have children. <laughs> you right. You don't realize that in that moment. You're not <laughs> grateful in that moment about that thing. Some people lost their kids over bullshit. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's different. Some people can't even hug their babies. You so busy beating your son in the stove because what he was. You know what I'm saying? It's just Facts. different out here. Facts, bro. Every day I can see my mom, like, because I know, like, this scenario of me living in her house is just a snapshot in time and history. And one day it'll be no more. Or what I where I won't see her face anymore. Yeah, I appreciate now, you know, being able to see her and shit, because yeah. I know that day will be gone someday. So I'm able to appreciate it here in this moment. I had to learn that too, man, because shit, it'd be times, you know, you you get so caught up in your own plan, you think you you got it, you got to figure it out. You just gonna try to figure this shit out your own way because you you took the time to figure out the angles and how you need to attack it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you forget. To let shit, sometimes you gotta let moms be mom. Mom still wanna put her two cents in before oh, yeah. I ain't yeah, shit like that. I was just I be trying to be focused on my own stuff. But now I look for it. It's like I wanna hear her input while I still can. Right. You know what I'm saying? On on everything. Say what you need yeah, to say. Make you appreciate. Yeah, make you appreciate it. Hey, I wonder if she know she might think I'm sick for this, but deep down on days when she ain't doing too good, maybe yelling, I'm happy. I'm like, ah, go ahead and get it in. Because one day I'm going to miss this shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, you know, That's the real shit. shit. I'm That's living in my world. I'm not in her world. You know what I mean? And I'm appreciating okay. things that I appreciate. So, hey. <laughs> That's real. Yes, sir, man. But, um, yo, Vaughn, bro. Every time, man, I want to thank you, bro. Every time, man. It's always good oh, talking yeah. with you, bro. Yeah. This one, I felt this one in my soul, bro. And like, this is what I want to spend t- my time doing, bro. Moments like these, bro. And yeah. I just hope somebody who listen to this right now, bro, is people who listen to my shit from beginning to end. Like, somebody got something from that. Trust me, bro. So, hey, man, I hope so. That, you know, that's what's up. I thank you, man. I thank you for your time, bro. You know how valuable that is. No honor, man. Thank you for your time, bro. You, and I'm proud of you, man. Do your thing. Keep doing your thing. For sure, bro. I appreciate Keep it, man. Don't do this again, bro. For sure, bro. All right, peace. Peace.